So, chunks, huh? Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're gonna be talking all about archetype chunks in UDECS. Now, archetype chunks or chunks are a very fundamental concept to Unity's entity component system. Now, you may not need to interface with them directly very often. However, they are still critical to understand as it will be helpful to you to make decisions about how best to set up the data and systems in your project to optimize performance for your specific needs. How archetype chunks are set up are also one of the main reasons as to why Unity ECS is so much more performant than traditional game objects. So we will be touching on that subject a little bit in today's video. Okay, so let's get into it. So the definition of an archetype chunk or simply just a chunk is a pre-allocated block of unmanaged memory containing the components for entities sharing the same archetype. Now let's kind of break this down a little bit. So for starters, if you haven't seen my video on archetypes, maybe that might be helpful for you to understand a little bit more. But to put it briefly, an archetype is basically just an identifier of a unique set of components that entities have within our project. Now when we talk about unmanaged memory, we're just talking about memory that is not managed by the garbage collector meaning that we do have to do the allocations and deallocations of memory ourselves. Well, I'm lying because Unity ECS handles all the allocation and deallocation of memory. So that's not something that we typically have to worry about. So when I talk about a block of unmanaged memory, this block is exactly 16 kilobytes in size and it holds all the actual data values for components of our entities. So if we have an entity that has a position, a rotation, maybe a move speed and a health component, all the actual data values for those components are going to be stored within that same 16 kilobyte block of memory. Furthermore, if we add more entities that have those exact same sets of components, those are all still going to be populated into that block of memory until that whole 16 kilobyte chunk is filled up. Once it's filled up, we're gonna go ahead and allocate a new one of these chunks. Now the way that this works, and this is so highly optimized, is when we actually pull that first you know, chunk of memory into the CPU cache, all the data for all the entities within that chunk are basically going to be loaded up within the CPU cache, which means that we can just quickly iterate through that data and we don't have to go to different places of RAM to find that data. Now when we're kind of iterating through this first chunk, the computer can start getting that next chunk ready if we do have like multiple chunks that are associated with the set of entities that we want to iterate across. So that means that, you know, probably by the time that we're finished iterating through that first chunk of memory, that second chunk of memory is already ready to go. And then so on, we're just gonna keep loading in those chunks into memory. So let me talk a little bit about what I mean when I say the block of memory is pre-allocated. So basically when we create a new chunk, we're gonna go ahead and block off that 16 kilobyte block of memory. And we'll say, you know, this is this block of memory that for this chunk. Now, based off of the components that we want to fit into this chunk, let's say we can fit a total of 25 entities into that chunk. Then what we're going to do for each specific component type of that entity is we're actually going to block off arrays of 25 length for every single component of that type. So basically we're going to have an array of 25 length of type A, followed immediately by array of 25 length of type B, and then type C, and so on. Now this concept is known as structure of arrays, or SOA, which is different than array of structs, which is AOS. Array of structs is basically when we say, you know, maybe we have a list of game objects. So then we can think of the first element of that array is going to have all the data associated with one particular game object. Now the next element of the array is going to have all the data associated with the next game object and so on. So ignoring the fact that these are all reference types and all these game objects are physically living all over in different places of memory. The important distinction to make is that not all data of the same type is going to be contiguous. So when we have SOA, that means that you know all the translation components, all that data is going to be right next to each other in memory. So when we want to iterate across those, we can just you know easily just go right in line there without having to skip over any data. When we're doing the same thing in an array of structs model, you know, if we just wanna look at the translation component of a particular game object, you know, we're gonna to have to look here, we're gonna to have to skip over in a block of memory and look here, we're gonna to have to skip over and look here. And you know, the further away that we have to look for the data that we need next, 
the more likely it is that we're actually going to get a cache miss and we're gonna to have to look into different places of memory to locate the actual data that we need. Now, I know I kind of went off on a little tangent on SOA and AOS, but it is kind of an important concept to understand. You know, the main thing really is that this pre-allocation basically pre-allocates these arrays so that when we actually do want to create new entities and we do have space available for these entities within our chunks, we literally just need to populate the values in these specific pre-allocated places and we don't need to worry about you know, allocating new space. That only happens when we have a chunk that's completely full and we need to just go ahead and allocate room for another chunk. So you can start to see that the more data components that we add to a particular entity, that's going to mean the less entities we're going to be able to fit within one single chunk. And I should point out that there are a few essentially zero cost per entity components. And these are things like tags, shared components, and chunk components. The reason these are zero cost per entity is because that data is actually shared across all entities within a chunk. So it only needs to have one instance of that per chunk rather than one instance per entity. Now, another advantage of the way this pre-allocation works in Unity ECS is all these arrays that we're creating are guaranteed to be parallel arrays. That means that the same element of every single array is going to be associated with the same entity. So let's say that for a particular entity, the translation component is going to be stored at the third element of the translation array within the chunk. Well, that means that we can also guarantee that the third element of the rotation array is going to be associated with the exact same entity. Furthermore, the third element of the move speed array is going to be associated with that exact same entity. So this is another of those things that Unity uses kind of behind the scenes to optimize for performance. And then just a few other things to really drive the point home about chunks is number one, that all entities within a chunk are guaranteed to be within the same archetype because they all share the same sets of components. And it should also be noted that we can have many chunks for one single archetype. Again, once a chunk gets filled up and we want to create a new entity of that same archetype, then we're just gonna go ahead and allocate a new block of memory and continually populating that one until that's full. And then of course, you know, generate as many more chunks as we need. So this is one thing to be aware of in certain scenarios is we need to look at our chunk utilization. So if we say have poor chunk utilization, maybe this means that we have a bunch of chunks, but only very few entities in them. So this is going to mean that, you know, our game isn't going to be as optimized as it can be because our entities are going to be all spread out in different places in memory. However, the better we can utilize our chunks, we can basically make you know these chunks much more full of data. That's going to allow us to optimize our game because we can just quickly iterate through entities within the same chunk without having to go to very many places in memory. Now, in most situations, this is not really something that you need to worry about. Now, if we just have one chunk and it has one player in it that's going to be totally fine but you know maybe if it gets to the point where we're like you know dynamically creating new archetypes and we have like 30,000 chunks that have like three entities in them each okay yeah that's probably going to be a problem and something that we want to look into resolving so anyways that's about going to do it for today's video that's again an overview about archetype chunks again it's not something that you're going to need to be interfacing with very frequently but I do hope that you kind of understand that a lot of the stuff when it comes to chunks and memory utilization, you know, this is all related and this is all going to, you know, really affect the decisions that you make for your game in order to optimize performance for your specific needs. So I do hope that you found today's video helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's data-oriented technology stack and their entity component system. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below or over on Discord over at tmg.dev discord. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.